Well, thank you, Margaret, for asking about the TIMS 2015 Encyclopedia. It's a wonderful compendium of mathematics and science instruction around the world. Each one of the 60-plus TIMS countries writes a chapter describing how curriculum in mathematics and science works in their country, together with any important policies or resources that they have devoted to mathematics and science education. So it's really an enormous research uh, and uh, resource for those interested in mathematics and science achievement internationally. Interestingly enough, there's considerable uh, similarity in mathematics instruction. At both the fourth and the eighth grade, around the world. There is somewhat less similarity in science instruction and curricula. Science instruction and curricula in the primary school, in some countries, even though this is changing, still is kind of a, there, here's the world around us, here's our environment kind of discussion, rather than the subject areas such as life science, uh, earth science, physical science, that most of the countries are turning to to make a better, uh, what I guess, foundation for uh, science later on in school. And then even at the eighth grade, there is less what kind of consistency in the particular sciences that uh, students take, and also quite a division between about half the countries that teach those sciences separately. So you will take biology, you will take chemistry, as separate subjects and could be taking three sciences at the same time. Whereas in about the other half of the countries, of which the United States is one, it's taught in a more integrated kind of way. The authors of each one of the chapters for the encyclopedia are representatives from each of the countries, and often they're in the ministry that sets the curriculum for example, uh, most countries, and again, the United States is an exception with our state system, but most of our countries have a national curriculum, and there is somebody in the government or the ministry that manages that process and what happens in the curriculum. And that person, uh, and often the person that we work with, you know, will co-author they will ask other people, maybe some mathematics and science experts in the country. But it's a, usually a joint effort in the countries, and we're very happy you know, to work with everyone, and it's a very nice process. Well, the incorporating technology into the curriculum is one of the major changes that has happened over the 20 years that we have been doing TIMS. And one of the most interesting examples is Singapore, who is one of our top performing countries, and they are currently on their fourth iteration of their master plan to incorporate technology into um, all curriculum areas, including mathematics and science. And it enables students to discuss ideas with each other online and to consult with experts in various subject areas. And of course, the typical things, for example, using a calculator or a computer in mathematics class to explore relationships, or in science to have simulations of various kinds of experiments. Everyone pretty much is trying. Some are less successful and are newer in their process. Singapore is probably the furthest along of any of our countries, but um, all countries, uh, Israel, for example, is incorporating a uh, <laughs> BYOD, which isn't what we really think of when we think of that. It's bring your own device so that students can bring their tablets or their um, portable computers to school and they can, with you know, perhaps fewer access to fewer resources have another way of incorporating technology into the classroom. 
But pretty much every country is making an effort. Sometimes when you think about early education in mathematics and science, and when you ask about that, I think of the fact that in some respects I'm happier than I'm older. And when I started preschool, it was more of a socialization kind of activity. These days, uh, pre-primary uh, programs often have curricula in mathematics and science. And then I think as a result of that, then some of the curricular topics that used to be later in students K through 12 uh, careers are moving down. For example, I had already mentioned in science where instead of studying the world around us, now we are learning, you know, physical science and some, or science and some of the hard, you know, more difficult and challenging subject matter earlier in the curriculum. Yes, you are correct in that uh, we had our first TIMS in 1995, and now we are six TIMS assessments later. It's assessed every four years. So we have hit our 20-year anniversary, which we're very proud of. And we notice, um, first of all, that the news is mostly good. The trends in achievement are generally up in many more countries than they uh, are the same or even decreases. And that's over the 20 years. That's borne out by the short-term trend since the last assessment four years ago in 2011. Nearly all countries up, very few down. The gender gaps that have been long-standing in mathematics and science since the beginnings are narrowing in some respects. We in uh, this TEMS 2015 had an additional component besides the fourth and the eighth grade where we assess students in uh, high-level STEM special programs in uh, nine countries. And there was quite a narrowing of the achievement gap for the TIMS Advanced um, students between uh, girls and boys in physics. So those gaps that are especially in science and especially at the eighth grade and especially as women grow older are narrowing. That's good. We also notice that uh, schools seem to be safer than they were. Uh, not that they're completely safe with the emergence of cyber bullying, but you know, still a problem. But that has been progress over time. So there's lots of nice, good progress, I think, worldwide. Not that everything's perfect. Yes, the Tim's Encyclopedia is a precursor. Sometimes we call it our uh, qualitative research about how the curriculum is delivered across the countries to provide a context for our achievement results that will be coming out in uh, shortly that will explain, uh, uh, make comparisons in the achievement across our six or so countries and benchmarking entities and show trends over time for the countries that have been participating in previous assessments and also have quite a bit of contextual questionnaire data that is related to students' experiences in how they learn uh, mathematics and science in their countries, in their schools, and in their classrooms, and even in their homes. The students that part participate at the fourth grade, their parents complete questionnaires about their home environment, which is very interesting uh, data, especially considered in conjunction 
with the achievement levels in the countries. One of the most interesting findings in the TIMSS 2015 encyclopedia did have to do with the fact that teacher requirements have been increasing over the 20 years of TIMSS relatively dramatically at both the primary and um, secondary levels. Uh, and particularly at the primary level. So in general, to become a teacher, it requires more years of university education and a university degree, often a master's degree. It's also more difficult to enroll or be accepted to teacher education programs, uh, sometimes requiring a higher uh, grade point average or even an interview. And it's also uh, more difficult to be certified in a number of countries. And often these certification requirements do include a written or oral examination. In uh, 1995, there was a considerable difference in teacher preparation across countries. But the one thing that we have discovered over the 20 years is uh, something uh, similar to what I was talking about before, that the requirements are becoming more similar across countries and uh, increasing. So uh, today, there's not so much difference. Most Almost all primary teachers have at least a bachelor's degree in every country. Uh, almost all uh, secondary school teachers have a master's degree, especially at the advanced, you know, teaching in the TIMSS advanced kinds of uh, courses. So, no more more similar, more better education through the years. Oh, the educational community is very fond of the encyclopedia. As a matter of fact, we started uh, making, we also have a, an international assessment of reading. And the encyclopedia notion was felt to be very important to uh, help explain reading and at the primary level. But uh, the TIMS representatives who are working in mathematics and science saw the encyclopedia for reading and decided that they would also like an encyclopedia. And so it has been popular every year since then. And I think that we would be, what, I think that discontinuing the encyclopedia would not be an option, <laughs> is what I think, <laughs> with our country. So. And, and uh, many people rely on it, because there isn't really anything else like it. So much comparative information in one spot. That is uh, the use of uh, data in making education decisions is something that seems to have come into its own during the 20 years that we've been working on TIMS, and we like to think that we've contributed to that in some ways, because with our trends, a country can implement what they think is an improved way of uh, delivering or conducting mathematics and science achievement, and then in the next um, iteration of the assessment, they can see if their trends are going up and they seem to be on the right track, or the reverse has happened in several instances over the 20 years. But most of our countries we have as part of the encyclopedia a section where they write how they use TIMS, and they use it to help their curricula and, and to help their instruction and to um, study issues of equity. So they find it very valuable in, those, in the respects that you're talking about.